Coming up today on Keys to Kingdom Living. Even when the enemy wants to deceive you with a lying spirit, because you have trusted in God and you hold the integrity of your heart like Job did after the enemy ate his lunch and killed all his children, he kept the integrity of his heart. Even his own wife says, why don't you just curse God and die? Why are you holding on to your integrity? God kept Job and God kept Abimelech. See, I don't have to know absolutely everything about God when I'm in a situation because I trust in the Lord and I lean on Him when I don't know how to stand. God will keep me. God will support me. And y'all are witnesses of that. Can I get a witness? Welcome to Keys to Kingdom Living. I'm your host, Pastor Asa Dockery, coming to you from the World Harvest North Sanctuary. We're located at 135 Bud Franklin Drive in Blairsville, Georgia. If you live anywhere in the vicinity, I want you to come out and be a part of one of our services. God is moving so powerfully. The anointing is getting stronger with every service in the season that we're in. Our services are Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. and Sunday evening at 7 p.m. and child care is provided for both services. Today we're bringing you a brand new message. It is entitled, Outnumbered. You may be going through a situation. I'm believing that God has brought you to the station for such a time as this to hear this message because when we're overwhelmed and we feel outnumbered by the enemy, that is the time that we become vulnerable to the lies of the enemy and fear can set in. If that sounds like something you're going through, I want you to get out the Word of God. Go with me and let's hear the first episode of Outnumbered. The Lord has given me a message for people that are up under the pressure and in trials of your life. You're fighting the good fight, and it seems like you're overwhelmed. So the Lord has given me some insights into his word. The message titled today is Outnumbered. Whenever we go through things that are way outside our control... We can feel overwhelmed, can we not? And so it's then those times that we have to guard our hearts when we feel overwhelmed. And we have to draw closer to God. And generally, it's in those times if you will really focus on God and set your heart on Him and His Word, He'll start speaking to you in that storm. And he'll show you things you've never known before. I I can attest to that through the storm that I've been going through. That God is showing me things out of the word of God I have never seen or heard. And the Lord wants us to realize that as Christians, we have his grace while in this earth. Now the Bible says the the ways of a transgressor are what? They're hard. But... Whenever a person's ways please the Lord, he'll cause even his enemies to be at peace with us. And so God gives us grace, and through that grace, we're able to endure the sufferings of this life. Paul tells us in 2 Timothy that we're to endure hardness, hardship, as a good soldier, and not to get entangled in the affairs of this life. Therefore, God has given me this message. I want to share it with you today. Let's pick it up and... Verse 1 of Psalm 46, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He's not just help. He's not just present help. He is a very present help in trouble. He's stressing that, is he not? He's all over you when you're in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, Though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Now the psalmist tells us that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. If there's ever a time a believer 
in a believer's life when it will seem as though God has forsaken us, it will generally occur when trouble strikes, especially when it's something that you never saw on your radar. It blindsided you. It knocked you out of your breath because it so devastated you. And it's in those trials, those fiery furnaces, that it will seem like God has abandoned you. Now, we all know that God's Spirit dwells in us, and that, and that alone should be enough to ass give us assurance when we find that we're devastated by tragedy. However, we are also humans who can easily get caught up in the moment. Can I get a witness? Amen. The doctor gives you a bad report, and it's like, where's God? And your emotions just go off the chart. Your thoughts start racing with you. And you're like, how am I ever going to come out of this? And, and you start grappling with, with yourself and, and with your faith. And your faith comes uh, under attack. And you're wondering, where am I? What you did is you just got knocked on, on, on your keister with a, a, a spiritual attack. And you've lost your center of gravity. And you've lost your compass spiritually. And, and you're in a whirlwind now. And what you've got to do is you've got to calm down. You've got to settle down. And you've got to allow the Holy Spirit to begin speaking to you because he's in you and just because he knew this stuff was going to happen even before the doctors knew it was going to happen before do divorce court knew it was going to happen before bankruptcy court knew it was going to happen he already knew it and he was preparing you for it but you've got to understand this life in Christ Jesus is not about our emotions it's not about our thoughts it is about our faith being in God and in his word and we're to be still and see what God's going to do. Amen. All right, God, this one I can't handle. You gave me a mountain. What are you going to do with this mountain? This is perhaps the reason why the writer says in the next line, therefore we will not fear. We won't allow fear to take us over to the point that we forget that God is still with us in troubling times. Though the earth be removed, and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Now it is essential that we guard our hearts from fear and hardness when trouble disrupts our lives. Can I get a witness? That is the time we must guard our hearts against fear, doubt, and hardness so that we don't give place to the devil and ultimately lose hope in God. Now, when Satan really hits you blindsided and you don't know which way is up and you don't know when you're going to come out of this and you don't even know if you're going to be standing going through this when you come out of it, it that is the time that Satan is going to try to talk to you and blind you by your circumstances to where that's all you see. That consumes you every waking day. And the more he can, Satan can consume us with what we're going through and the emotion of it all and the upheaval of it all, that is the time that Satan will begin to blind us to the hope that we have in Christ. Now turn with me to Psalm 27. Let's take it a little deeper. We'll take it deeper, deep enough to find you where you at. So we're going to dig a little deeper. David is writing in the psalm. He says in verse 1, verse, uh, Psalm 27, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So who's our confidence got to be in? It's got to be in the Lord. He is the light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? If God keeps us, we're going to be kept. It doesn't matter what weapon is formed against us, what person gets angry at us. God's going to sustain us so that no weapon formed against us is able to prosper. When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army, I want you to think about that. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Boy, this guy's got some serious faith. I'm talking about taking on an army 
And he says, if an army comes up against me and is encamped all around me, I shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, I will, in this, I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. Now, drop down to verse 10. He changes things a little bit up for us. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord. This is what we've got to do as Christians. It's more than us just knowing that God exists and we believe in Jesus Christ, his son, as our savior. We've got to come to a place through the word of God, students of God's word, where we know God's ways. And so he says, teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. Are we not living in that hostile environment today here in America? I would have lost heart, he said, unless I had believed. I like the unless. I would have lost heart, but I chose to believe. You ever been in a situation where you were losing heart and there was no other option? I'm going to believe that God exists. I believe that God is for me. And if God be for me, even this cannot be against me. He said, I choose to believe despite what my heart is telling me to give up on. That I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And then, out of all of the stuff that he has gone through and all the things he has experienced, David tells us in verse 14, wait on the Lord. And while you're waiting on the Lord, be of good courage. Did you know it's hard to have courage when you're drowning in your situation and it seems like God is nowhere to be found? It is hard to dig up courage in that situation. Can I get a witness? And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So have you ever watched a cartoon of two boxers in a fighting ring and one of the characters lands a solid punch on the chin of the other, his opponent, and whirly birds start circling around his head? <laughs> then the referee asks the guy that got the hit. He says, you all right? And the guy says, I'm fine. But you can clearly see the lights are on, but nobody's home. <laughs> he got his daylights punched out of him. Sometimes the enemy can land a punch against us that dazes and shakes us to the very core of our being. But we cannot let what has shaken us also shake our confidence in the truth. I may be shaken I may be trembling with fear, but I will not let what is shaking me shake my confidence in the truth of God's word, in the faithfulness of my God. I will not let what I have experienced, though it is dark as night, though it is hard as it can be, and though the flames of hell are raging against me, I choose to not let my heart faint when I believe in the truth of God's word because I know that Satan will never have the final say in anything to do with my life as long as I keep my eyes on the Lord. Can I get a witness? He is not just the author of my faith. He is the completer of my faith. And Satan is not going to have the last word in my battles. It is going to be God because I'm going to keep my confidence in God and in his word because he's not man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should change his mind. Whoops, I didn't mean to write that. God don't do that. So even though we get shaken, our confidence in God cannot be shaken. Now, if you understand that God is still with you as a child, even though you've gone through the flames and the floods of the enemy in your life, then you are blessed. If you understand... While you're going through your go through, and Satan has, has lit a torch on you, opened the floodgates against you, but you still understand that God is still with you and he's still fighting for you, then you are a blessed individual. 
So many in the world do not understand the ways of God. Instead of knowing what the Bible says about who God is and how he remains faithful to those who even in times of loss, millions of people who walk in spiritual ignorance suppose that God is bad or evil because bad things happen to God's people. They don't know God's ways, the world don't. And so they assume, well, if he's letting bad things happen to his children, then he must be a bad God. It's what they don't know that is destroying them. Yet David, who knew God and also understood that we live in a fallen world and we have an adversary, the devil, who's going about as a roaring lion, David counsels us not to lose heart when your family forsakes you, though my mother and my father forsake me, he said, and a host of the enemies encamp around you seeking to destroy you. David has serious confidence in God. I said David had serious confidence in God. Let me give you a case in point. When he was a little boy, carrying a lunch to his brothers out on the battleground, who goes up against a giant with no armor and a slingshot and a stone when the giant has a sword bigger than you are? He did. Wow. Can you imagine that? No military training? No armor, not suited up, no battlefield worn, not been taught. And he says, I'll take him on. And while he's saying, I'll take on the giant, all of the armies of God are standing on the hillside over there. And they're looking at the giant and they're trembling in fear because they had no confidence in God to deliver that giant into their hands. Therefore, they wouldn't step out. But David, there was something inside of David. There's something that's got to get inside of us because we've been on the backside of the desert tending his sheep when nobody wanted to give us the time of day. We wrote Psalms while they were over there having party in Jesse house and we were going through hell and high water and seeing God in our midst and delivering us from the paw of the bear and the paw of the lion and God has delivered us from these things and then we step out on that battlefield and there's something that rises up inside of you says I will not allow that giant to intimidate the God that's inside of me because this is not by might, it's not by power but it's by his spirit that he's going to deliver this giant into my hands. David had a confidence that would not quit. That's what we need in the body of Christ right now, especially in the leadership of the body of Christ. Confidence in God. Well, I'm just not sure he'll deliver me. You might not ought to go then. Now, David tells us what kept his heart from fainting. We need to know that. In other words, he's telling us how to have hope even when you're facing a seeming, seemingless, seemingly hopeless situation where the enemy has outnumbered you. Ever gone through a trial? where the odds were stacked against you. It's like, Lord, you don't come through for this and I can't get through. David believed God. And not only that, he took to heart what the Lord had told him and what the Lord had written in the word and the law and what he had experienced with God in the desert. It was David's unrelenting faith in God and in his word that kept him from allowing his heart to be overrun by fear when it seemed as though the situation was hopeless. God is with us, and he's got grace for that trial. I said God is with us, and he has grace for whatever trial. Amen. Since David refused to allow fear to take over his heart and would not allow the fear to negate his faith in God, God was then able to give him courage to get through the trouble and overcome the despair. If we will just be still in times of devastation, in times of fear, in times of turmoil, 
God will help us to get through the darkness. I want to talk about the darkness. Because when you lose your world, and you wake up and you don't have that world any longer, you've got darkness. Because you've never been here before. And you don't know what to do. You don't know how you're going to respond to what has just happened to you. And you've got to have some clarity. You've got to have some spiritual light and direction in your life so that you can know that God is for you. He's with you. And he is the one that's going to show you how to get up out of this. But before he does that, you're going to be in darkness, though you're a Christian. Turn with me to Psalm 18. Got several scriptures here I need to read because we need a foundation in which to put our faith in. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. In other words, God is David's everything here. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Where's he got his attention on? His enemies are worshiping God. See, there, there's the key right there. Though the enemies are encamped about me, I will not look to them. I will look unto the hills which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, who neither slumbers nor sleep. I know he doesn't sleep because he wakes me up at 5 o'clock in the morning and says, don't go back to sleep. <laughs> the pangs of death surrounded me. The floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. And here's what he did. He heard my voice from his temple, and my cry came before him even to his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken. See, you you got to understand, when we're up against it like we are in America, and it looks like there's more against us than those that are for us, and we just get on our knees and we don't pay attention to who those are that are against us. But we look to God and we get our eyes on God and we keep our eyes on the Word. And God starts hearing the prayers of the righteous. God starts moving and He starts clearing His voice and He starts tapping His foot. When He taps His foot, the kingdoms of darkness start shaking down here and the kingdoms of hell starts trembling and they're like in a panic, in an uproar. And it's like, what's got them all stirred up? God is moving. God God is shaking and God is getting ready to release his power to, to set the righteous free from the traps of the enemy and the enemy knows that and the enemy knows that their time is short and that's why they're so fierce right now because God is moving and the earth is quaking <sighs> because he was angry you don't want to mess with mama's kids you mess with mama all day long, but you mess with her kids, you got wrath on your hands. You mess with God's kids, you got another thing coming. Ask Pharaoh how it goes. 400 years. Devil is a liar. Because he was angry, smoke went up from his nostrils. He was steaming mad. And devouring fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled in it. He bowed the heavens also and came down with darkness under his feet. And he rode a cherub and flew, and he flew upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. It shrouded him, enshrouded him. His canopy around him was dark waters, thick clouds of the skies from the brightness before him. His thick clouds passed with hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire, and he sent out his arrows and scattered the foe, lightnings in abundance, and he van vanquished them. Then the channels of the sea were seen. See, after God comes down and, and wreaks havoc on the, the enemy's plan and the enemy's powers and destroys the enemy, then things start coming into view. 
clarity. See, when God arises and his enemies are scattered, you'll start seeing daylight again. You'll start seeing uh, structure in your life again. You'll start seeing life back in your life again. Things will start coming back together that were once torn apart. Then the channels of the sea were seen and the foundation of the world were uncovered. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils, he sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy for those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity. Thou, Satan always gets you when you're down. But the Lord was my support. Say that with me. The Lord was my support. He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. God delights in you if you delight in him. Now please notice when David saw the, the Lord and the Spirit coming down to deliver him from those who outnumbered him. He saw the Lord shrouded in darkness. I want you to think about that. He's the God of light. In him there is no darkness. There's no variance, no shadow of turning in God because he is light. Darkness was the Lord's covering and darkness was under his feet. You may ask if God is light, then why does the word depict him shrouded or clothed in darkness? Watch this. We don't always understand God or his ways. Neither do we always recognize the Lord's presence when faced with trouble. Because trouble ignites fear in us, anxiousness, worry, and that can skew our perception of God. And we will not be able to recognize him. Don't you love how the Lord just brings truths out of his word so that we can have something of substance in the spirit to stand on? while in a storm in the natural. I love how God breaks it down for us and makes it real and plain so that we can hold on to it and it can keep us when we may be in the greatest battle of our lives. Sometimes when you're in a new spiritual trial that you've never been in before, it can shake us. And God has given us this word today to help you to understand that God is still there with you. He's still for you. It's the devil that's against us. So I want you to be sure and mark the station and the time that you're watching Keys to Kingdom Living because I want you to tune back in next week for the powerful conclusion of Outnumbered. If you're not able to do that, maybe you have work or something going on, always contact the church office and we'll be glad to uh, send you out either a CD or a DVD of the sermon and be sure and ask the operator to send it by name. It is Outnumbered. As we get ready to leave you today, I want to encourage you, if you have any prayer requests, I always encourage you to do this. Send them in. Call them in so that we can agree and believe God for you to see God move those mountains, turn situations around, and bring you out safely on the other side for his glory and for your victory. As always, I want to encourage you. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Till this time next week, may God richly bless you is my prayer.